So you're thinking where to go in 2019 for travel. Well, in this video, I'm gonna recommend some absolute gems for you. It was actually really quite hard to try and prepare for this video because uh, I started making a list and I realized that list is a little bit too long I and mean, I probably don't want to give you a video that's probably an hour long. So I decided I'm just going to try and cut it down to roughly about 10 places I recommend or areas. So I've got a bit of a mixed bag of recommendations of places that seem to be up and coming, places I've been to and places that I'm definitely going to go this year. And in my list of travel recommendations, if you're planning to go to that place or you've been to before, love to know your thoughts in the catch-all comments. I'm always looking for better places to go. Let's skip this preamble and go straight into the list. And the first in the list is Germany. Germany is great for both the shorter-term traveler and longer-term backpacker. When it comes to transport, you have so many options. It's got a great train network, which I must admit can be a bit pricey, but if you're short for time, it's really, really great and really fast to move around. It also has a great coach network. Flixbus is a great option when it comes to traveling around by coach. I've been using them for the past couple of years to move around Europe. Germany has also got a very varied landscape. So you have your party cities like Berlin, Hamburg, and Freiburg. Freiburg being a great student town for a good old party. But you also have these historical cities like Rothenburg and Monster. And there's loads of nature and outdoor activities like the Bavarian Forest Nature Park and the absolutely gorgeous Rhine Valley. So as part of my recommendations for 2019 and also my travel plans, I'm planning to go to Hamburg, a very cosmopolitan port town with some really interesting stories when it comes to the history. Plus, I'm going there in February, so if you're around, definitely let me in the discussion. I'd love to try and meet up with you guys. On top of that, there's loads of alternative beer festivals in spring, summertime in Germany. So chances are, be sure listing a few come spring, summertime and seeing what places are good for a good old beer festival. And Romania is next on the list for me, an absolute new country to explore. I met a couple of people from Bucharest quite recently and they mentioned how it's such a buzzing city with loads to do and see. They've also mentioned how it's got some amazing architectural delights and quite varied in different parts of Romania, especially the castles, which hey, who doesn't like a good old castle, right? And on top of that, there's loads of good yummy Romanian food out there. So the next on the list is America. Now I've only ever been to New York in America and I need to expand my horizons a little bit and check out some more places around America. Top of the list is probably Chicago, San Francisco. I've got a couple of friends who live across America. So if you guys are going to be floating around America, especially in autumn time, definitely let me know in the comments. You never know, you might see me in your part of the world. And next on the list is Georgia. The country, not the state. So I've already been to Georgia as part of my Silk Road trip from a few years ago. And you may have seen a couple of videos early on on this channel. And I still need to create some content using some of the videos. So you make sure you subscribe to actually see some of that content. I recommend Georgia because it's got some amazing wine. Apparently, Georgia is the birthplace of wine. If you're a bit of a wine lover, definitely head to the Kahiti region and just have some lovely wine. I'd especially recommend going to a couple of towns which are based in the mountains so you can look down whilst enjoying some lovely wine and some great food. Which is a nice segue to the food. I myself am a big fan of dumpling. They've got this one particular dumpling that you have to eat in a certain way. There's a certain challenge to eating it where you bite into it and all its soup that's contained inside the dumpling without it falling apart and splashing the sauce all over your face. Another interesting thing about Georgia is its Soviet history. This is definitely one for Soviet fans because they have a Stalin museum and loads of souvenirs in the markets. And next on the list is North Africa, in particular Morocco and Algeria. I've got a feeling that 2019 will be particularly popular for Morocco as loads of bloggers are covering at the moment. I do like to explore the Islam influenced lands and just learn about the culture from just another time. I do have a soft spot for ruined cities. An example is Ben Hadou in Morocco. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It just looks so, so pretty. And I read about the Berber settlements of the High Atlas Mountains and also the blue city of Chafchoghan. Probably mispronouncing it. I am interested in going to Egypt and Tunisia. Egypt in particular, because I do like learning about the Egyptian history. Tunisia, because I know next to nothing about Tunisia. And next on the list is Spain. Now Spain, I'm particularly really interested in doing because I'm trying to learn Spanish at the moment. 
I must admit, I'm going quite slow learning going through Duolingo, but, but I'm making steady, steady progress. I've been to Spain quite a few times before, but every time I go, I find out something new about Spain and I just want to explore more and more of it. I'm particularly interested in going to the Basque Country, which is the northeastern part of Spain. Apparently, it's very different culturally to the rest of Spain. When it comes to festivals and fiestas, people know about the Tomato Festival or the running of the bulls, but there's so many different other types of festivals. For example, on the theme of fire, there's a festival called Las Vallas de Valencia, which is happening in mid-March. And that involves burning lots of big effigies, which artists spend pretty much most of the year building, which I kind of find a bit weird because you spend all this time building like an effigy or some, some kind of big sculpture thing, and then you see it all go down in flames in a few minutes. Pretty crazy. Top tip, I actually recently came back from Alicante. They also have their own version of the big festival of fire. Also, there's the Semana Santa, which is usually around Easter time. It's a massive traditional religious procession. In fact, if you want to get a sense of what's it like, check out Brandon Lee's Thrones of Semana Santa. There's a link in the description. Of course, there's loads of music festivals. I myself am a big fan of music festivals. I particularly like city festivals. In fact, if you're interested in learning about different types of music festivals, especially city festivals, you should also check out some of my other content around music festivals, links in the description. In fact, I was thinking about doing a special video purely about music festivals and where to go in, uh, in Europe. If you're interested, let me know in the comments. And my next recommendation is Central Asia. Now, a couple of years ago, I actually did a good chunk of the Silk Road. I went from Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, Armenia, Georgia, Turkey, and then from Turkey, overlanded all the way back to the UK. It was a pretty epic and amazing trip. I thoroughly recommend it. And for a good tour company to do that, these guys do a really, really good job. They've basically taken a US school bus, emptied it out and made it into a big tour bus. And I've got some amazing memories from that particular trip. In fact, I still need to edit those videos, so you should definitely hit the subscribe button to get a sense of what I did on that trip to be released very, very soon. If you're a fan of history, you should check out the story of the Silk Road, which is an ancient network of trade routes that connect to the east to the west. I also recommend this book if you're interested in learning a bit more. For me personally, I'm actually particularly interested in Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. That's the countries that I missed out last time. And my next recommendation is anybody who's a bit of an outdoor and active or trekking fan, Nepal. Oh, Nepal, Nepal. This is quite a spiritual twist for me. It's a country that did change me a little bit. I always did enjoy walks and whatnot, but there's just something about going to Nepal and doing your first couple of treks there that it really opens up your eyes with its absolutely breathtaking landscapes. There's trekking routes for all levels of experience and fitness. I recommend doing what the locals do, which is Marty Hamal, and it's getting really, really popular. You have a better view of the mountains, you go through the forest, and also if you're particularly interested in going to Nepal, don't forget to subscribe. I'll be releasing my video content of my trip. So my last tip, drum roll, is the UK. Now some of you may be thinking, doesn't that guy live in the UK? Hmm, yes I do. But the thing is, is that since I live in the UK, I don't really like feel motivated to explore much of the UK. I always want to go abroad. Well this year, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna actually do some more exploration around the UK. For example, I haven't really been to Oxford, I haven't been to Cambridge, Bath, and towards the end of last year, it made me realize, actually, maybe I should just um, explore more, more part of my world since there are so much historical delights around me, not too far from London where I live. And hopefully in the coming months, you'll see more interesting content about the heritage sites coming to you soon on this channel. And that's it for my recommendations for 2019. Like I mentioned before, if you're planning to go or you've been to the places that I've mentioned, definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments on where to go. I'm always looking for new places and top places to go that I don't know about. And that's it for now. I wish my audience a happy new year and hopefully I'll see you at the next video.